chat ones. You know how you can chat on Snapchat? Got a few of those. KK111 wants to know, would you ever do a meet and greet in New Zealand and are you gonna get a PO box? Good question. Meet and greets are something that I really wanna do. Like wherever I travel in the world, I wanna try do a meet and greet because I wanna meet you guys. Like that would make me the happiest girl in the world. So if I ever do go to New Zealand, I have been there once and it was beautiful and I loved it and I went skiing and it was just an amazing experience. So I do wanna go back there. So if I do come back, I will definitely do a meet and greet and hopefully I'll get to meet you. The second question, are you gonna get a PO box? Yes, I really want to get a peer box. Only thing is I don't know if you guys will send stuff So I don't want to just have a peer box and then it's never used I kind of want to get a peer box so that I can interact with you guys So let me know down below if you would use the peer box because if there's enough of you that want it and We'll use it and we can interact over there Then I will totally get one because I think it would be so much fun and really really great The next question is a long one and it is over snapchat messenger. She says, hi, my name is Michaela and I'm 15 and I was wondering what your idea is on long distance relationships. There's a few questions in this, so I'm just going to answer them as I go. My idea on long distance relationships is I have so much respect for people that can maintain a relationship while they are doing the long distance thing. Personally, for me, like I would do it if I had to, but I wouldn't necessarily want to because I'm that type of person. I need to physically be with that person. I need to see them, I like going on adventures and stuff like that, so it would kill me, it would be really, really difficult and I don't think I could do it unless I'd already established a relationship and then they moved overseas, then obviously I would, of course I would do it because you do what you gotta do, right? But because I know you'd have to have so much trust and I just think it would be really difficult, but props to you if you are in a long distance relationship, I have so much respect for you and um, good luck. And I hope that it's not too hard on you and that you get to see each other regularly because that would be bloody difficult and I would not like to be in that situation. She also said, also, is there any places or ways it would be more easy to find a girlfriend that lives closer? Or any advice on how to get the confidence to ask girls out? Firstly, I'm going to answer the question of any places or ways it would be more easy to find a girlfriend that lives closer. It is much easier when you are old enough to be able to go to gay clubs and when you are legally allowed to go do that. So this is something I struggled with a lot because I realized I liked girls when I was 14. And in Australia, you can't go to gay clubs until you're 18. So I feel ya because for four years, I was like, how do I meet girls? This is so difficult. How am I ever gonna meet a girl before I'm 18? Blah, 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 blah. What I would say is if you aren't old enough to go clubbing and go to gay clubs where you can meet other lesbians and bisexuals, I would say the internet. Now, it's a bit dodgy. It can be really dodgy, so be really careful and be really safe. And I was actually seeing a girl before I was 18, and I met her on Tumblr, and we started chatting, and then we, like, FaceTimed, and then we ended up meeting up, and we kind of started dating a little bit, like, dating, not really, like, you're my girlfriend, I'm your girlfriend, but started seeing each other, and, yeah, I met her online, so I would definitely recommend, you know, going on Tumblr. There's actually a really good Tumblr page called girlswholikegirls.tumblr.com and girls can post a photo and a description of a bit about themselves and you can search by country so that's also a really great way to meet other girls from your country. And Tinder, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I'm like promoting Tinder on here but Tinder is also a great way to like talk to other girls who are local and who live near you because I know when you are bisexual or lesbian sometimes you feel like you're the only one and there's no one else like you around in your area, but you'd be surprised. So I would say reach out online, be very careful because there are some fucking weirdos over there and some crazy people. But I would probably say, yeah, Tumblr, Tinder, there's a lesbian app called Brenda, or it used to be called Brenda, now it's called something else, but if you type in Brenda at the app store, it'll come up. Her next question was, how do I get the confidence to ask girls out? This is really scary and daunting because when it's with guys, it's kind of expected that guys will ask the girl out a lot of the time. I mean, it does happen both ways, but with girls, it's kind of like, who's gonna ask who out? Like, what is my role? Blah, 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 blah. And I would just say, if you feel confident within yourself and who you are, it'll be much easier for you to ask someone out. Although the fear of rejection is something you will probably face. It doesn't really go away. Like when you pluck up the courage to ask someone out, you could get a yes, you could get a no. So if you feel confident and secure within yourself, then it's a bit easier to deal with that sort of situation, even if they do say no. So I would just say work on yourself, build your self-confidence in regards to your sexuality and take it slow. Don't like rush into asking a girl out, really get to know her first and be sure of your decision before you 
take that step, if you know what I mean. Then she says, I go to a small school and only know of one person that is out and people are rude and hateful about it. I would like to say I'm not afraid of it, but I think in the back of everyone's head we are all a bit afraid. And honestly, if you answer, I will most definitely be fangirling. Lots of love to you and Sarah. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I love you. I know it can be really hard, especially during high school, because high school is like a bubble and people are like judgmental and stuff like that. So all I would say is fuck the people that are rude and hateful and judgmental against people like us, because that's their problem. and. They're narrow-minded and small-minded and they're not worth your time. But I totally feel you that you are a bit afraid because there is judgement that comes with all of this and it can be really scary, especially in high school when it's like a bubble and you're not really 100% sure of who you are and you're trying to fit in. So I feel ya and I've been there myself. I knew I was bisexual for most of my high school years so I know what it's like. Push through high school and the judgement and the rude people because when you finish and you leave and enter this big world, you will, it'll be so much better and you will feel so much happier about it and much less afraid, if you ask me. That's just my opinion, but it'll get better after high school. That's what happened to me and hopefully it happens to you as well. The next one is from Sophia Townsend. Town, Townsend. Oh my gosh, cute. Look at those little doggies. Oh my gosh, cute. That kind of looks like my dog, except my dog's a lot fatter. My dog's really, really fat. That is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, the next question is from Sunny. Hi, uh, I'm Sunny from Finland. I want, want, to, want to ask what's your favorite picture from your childhood? I don't know if you filmed the video already, this Snapchat Q&A, but anyway, I really like your videos and keep going. Yay! <laughs> Oh, cute! I'm so glad you like my videos and I love your accent, it's awesome. Uh, my favourite childhood picture, that's a hard one. I've got one downstairs and I was like this wild child. I never wore clothes, I never brushed my hair. I had like a white blonde little mane ringlet. And I used to like fill up a washing basket and sit in it and play with my dolls and like wash their hair. I was like a weird wild child. My favourite childhood photo is one that I have downstairs. I'll insert it if I can, but it's basically me with these huge glasses on my face and no shirt, so I may not insert it because it is a little bit, a little bit naughty. And just this wild blonde hair and these huge glasses that are like twice the size of my face, which I think they were my mum's and I just stole them. And I just put them on and I was like, I had this like attitude little face and it's one of my favourite photos of when I was younger because it's quite funny. And it's just like this wild three-year-old with some attitude and <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I see it. So that's probably my favorite. Oh, we're getting to the end of it. Okay, the next one is from Charlie Bundle. You and Sarah are so cute together. I hope I am the same with my girlfriend. Aw, thank you so much. That's really cute of you. And I'm sure you and your girlfriend are absolutely beautiful and absolutely perfect together and hopefully very, very happy. The next one is from Headway Wow. Headway Wow. And this is a long message, so I'm going to read it. Hey me, first of all I wanted to tell you my English isn't perfect and I'm so sorry for that. Don't be sorry girl, it's all good. For the first time I'm using this program and it's a little weird for me, so here's my story. I am a YouTuber, gaming live streamer, 21 years old. I have a huge problem right now, I'm so afraid from death. Two months ago my grandma and, gra and my grandpa passed out. Then my best friend passed out in hospital. Then Orlando. I won't speak about that. Way too many things happen more. And I can't deal with the fact that we live only one life and they we're closing our eyes forever and never gonna live again. I'm never gonna see sunlight again from my again, my friends, my girlfriend. I had lots of goals in my life to save money, to buy a house and everything so I can make my girlfriend and my life easier, but now I lose the point in the the life. Or lose the point to live. I talked to my girlfriend about that and she tried to help me. She told me that one day we will have kids, they will stay up after us and it down worthy to worry about the death because that's the cycle of life. But I can't deal with that fact. I really can't deal with the fact one day I will be gone forever and I will only be a memory. So my question is what to do, how to stop thinking about death and get my normal life back. Please help. I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through this and you have this fear of death. I definitely think that within most of us there is a fear of death. I guess yours is just to a much greater extent. But what I would say is just try not to let, try not to worry about future stuff. Try live in the now, stay in the present and not get too bogged down and stressed about oh my gosh one day I'm gonna die and I will only be a memory. That's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to all of us. One day we will all be gone and we will be a memory, but I do think that our souls still live on. But I think if you get too caught up in the future and worrying about death, then it will stop you from living your life now 
and then you will have regrets and I just don't think anyone should have regrets of their life so if you can try your very best I have a really itchy eye <laughs> If you can try your best to try, live in the present, appreciate the moments and the time you have now. Being the age you are with your beautiful girlfriend and enjoying life together now. And yes, it's great to have like goals and stuff for the future. It's good that you're looking ahead. But try not to look ahead too much to the point where it's going to stop you from living your life to the fullest now. Because you deserve to have a happy life and not to be preoccupied worrying about things that are going to happen way down the line. I can totally understand where it comes from because you've seen a lot of death in your life and I can totally understand where this fear of death comes from because you've been quite close to it in regards to other family members and friends and whatnot. I strongly believe that there is a plan for everyone's life and things just work out the way they're meant to be. But I think trying to celebrate those people's lives and remember them for all the good things they were is really important instead of focusing on their death, focus on their life. So. I hope that helps you in some way. I personally can't relate because I haven't had that many close people to me pass away, but I hope that that somehow helps you to stay in the present and enjoy this moment for what it is because that's what life's about. So I've got a few more. I think this video is getting really long because I don't know when to keep quiet, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. I've got two more. The first one is from Megan. Hey Amy, from me here in Rainy Island, just thought I'd ask you questions for your Q&A. Does kissing girls feel different from guys and when did you realize you were bisexual? Look how cool that guitar is. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Love your videos. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet and I love the little rainbow. Gay pride. Woohoo! I kind of answered the bisexual question earlier. In regards to kissing girls and kissing guys, for me it is different. It's different because kissing girls I find is more emotional for me. I feel more... I feel a stronger emotional connection when I kiss a girl as opposed to kissing a guy and in previous relationships I always kind of felt there was something missing and now I can kind of pinpoint that. It is different but I guess it's different for everyone. Some people might feel a stronger emotion when they kiss a guy than they kiss a girl. Straight people will not feel any emotion when they kiss a girl probably but it is different and I do prefer kissing girls than kissing guys. <laughs> okay we're up to the last one. Oh my gosh I'm so sad this video is over. I could sit here all day answering your questions and this is from Estefania. Oh I love that name Estefania. Hey how are you? Did you always like girls or do you like boys too? I like the green little background you got there. How are you? Well, I'm alright. I'm quite well actually. I'm very happy because I'm filming this video and talking to you guys. And to answer your question, yeah, I like both. I'm bisexual so that means I do like girls and I do like guys. I like girls more so it's not like a 50-50 thing for me. It's definitely more towards liking girls than guys but it doesn't mean I don't like guys at all because that would make me 100% lesbian. Not that I'm saying you have to put a label on it, I'm just trying to categorize it so it's easier to understand. That would make me 100% lesbian. I'm not quite there, but I'm not 50-50 bisexual. I'm somewhere in the middle. And as I mentioned earlier, when I was about 14, I realized that I am this way and I do like girls as well. I look back on my childhood and I'm like, wow, I was such a gay child and I dressed very tomboyish and I can pick out little things and be like, wow, I could have realized a lot earlier, but I was too young to kind of realize. I mean, some people realize really young, but I realized when I was about 14 years old and, um, that was seven years ago, so it's been quite the journey, and it's been a good one. It's had its ups and downs, but uh, yeah. Okay, I know the lighting is different for this clip, and I am in a different position. I accidentally forgot to answer a question, and I didn't see it, and I'm a silly little nink for not seeing it. So I thought I would just sit here and answer it quickly. I've packed up my lights and stuff, so sorry the lighting's not too great for this clip. But I'm just going to insert it, and then it'll get back to good lighting and everything, and continue with the video. Sophie wants to know... Hi Amy, my question regards your necklace you often appear to be wearing in your videos, the one that is in the shape of a state with a love heart cut out of it. It's really pretty, I would love to know if there is a story behind it, who was it from, where does it represent, thank you so so much, I'm a huge fan, much love, Sophie. Oh, you're so sweet, I'm glad you like it and I'm glad you're a fan and you like my videos and you're amazing. I'm sorry I forgot to answer your question but I am answering it here. The necklace she means is this one. Basically it is the shape of Africa and it has a little heart at the bottom in South Africa which is where I was born. Basically the story behind this necklace is that I was born in South Africa and I have a very soft spot for Africa and South Africa particularly. So the necklace really represents my love for Africa and my love for where I come from. The heart is in South Africa, which is where I was born. And I got it from a market in Africa. They had all this jewelry displayed and I just fell in love with it. And I don't really take it off because a part of me will always stay in South Africa. So I just want to keep that with me wherever I go. So thank you for your question. And sorry, I forgot to answer it. I was scrolling through and I completely didn't see it. But 
yeah that's the story behind my necklace. So that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. I absolutely loved sitting down and seeing your beautiful faces and answering your questions. Probably in the top few favorite videos I've ever filmed because I get to see you guys and interact with you and that's just like my favorite sort of video. If you guys liked it and you want to see more Snapchat Q&As and get involved, give this video a thumbs up because I'd love to do more of them. This was so enjoyable and I hope you guys found it as enjoyable as I found filming it. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, it's at Amy Grace with three E's. I will be posting if I'm doing another Snapchat Q&A on my Instagram and my Twitter. So if you want to keep up to date, definitely follow me over there and you may be a part of the next one. And if you're new here and this is the first video of mine you're watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the family. I hope you stick around and watch some of my other stuff because I upload every single week. Thank you so much for sending me your snaps. You guys are the best and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to send me your lovely snapchats and your lovely questions. But I'm going to go. I hope you're having a great day. Stay happy, stay positive, be true to who you are and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye! And that's a wrap. I loved it. I loved that video so much. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Bye!